Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Turtles Love Pizza. This is the podcast where we go over everything to do with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cinematic universe, culminating in the final Last Ronin comic book that is currently ongoing and hope hopefully will end by February, I think. I think that's the last issue. But today I have my co-host with me. Hey everybody, this is Andrew. Ready to talk about the atrocity that is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Michael Bay version. Alright. Well, before we get into that, Andrew, normally what we do is we kind of go over you know, our viewing history. And I kind of want to get a perspective of when you saw this and who you saw it with. I honestly don't remember. I think I probably watched it by myself, uh, to be (laughs) honest. Um, You know, I'm pretty adult by the time this one comes out. I probably went to the theater by myself. Uh Um, I don't really remember. I just remember watching it and saying, okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And mm-hmm. now watching it again the other day, I was like, wow, this is a lot worse than I thought it was. <laughs> I, I was like, I have... yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, you go ahead. No, I was going to say I'd have to agree with you on that one. It is, it is definitely worse than I remember it. And um, I, I just wanted to ask you, though, ever since the first three originals, man, the recurring theme is your mom has been watching with you on your birthday. But on this one, was it on your birthday? This no, no this, this was came July. out in August. August. Oh, this is August. So yeah. it's not even near your birthday. No, that's why they totally missed the mark. Is they didn't do it for me. If they did <laughs> it for me, then it would have been a great movie. But this one was not made for me. Hey, so question. Another thing uh, that you love are the Neko toy, Neka toys, right? Neka line. Yeah. So. <laughs> If they do, they have Neca Neca line of this one. Oh heck no, no. And, and if they did, would you buy it? <laughs> no, I definitely would not buy <laughs> okay. it. Like the the last team and team movie that we watched, I would probably buy those. As I was watching it, I was like thinking of all the cool like figures they could do really well, like uh, Raph as like that vigilante character, or like Leo Ooh. with all those swords at the end. Yeah, like, those would be awesome sculpts. But, like, this movie, they're just so ugly. Like, absolutely just atrocious. And then the whole movie was April O'Neil. Like, it yeah. honestly should have been called April O'Neil and sometimes the Ninja Turtles. Yes, exactly. And and we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But, okay, so before... Why don't we just get into spoilers or whatever? This movie's been out since 2014. Yeah, if you and... haven't watched it by now, don't. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't watched it by now, you probably made a conscientious choice to skip it. And when you hear w- what we have to say about it, you probably made the right choice. Okay, Or just watch it as a joke and just like, don't take it seriously, laugh your head off. And if you're a really big fan of Megan Fox, then this movie is all for you. Oh, like, not if you even. love Megan Fox, this movie no. is your movie. Because it's literally all Megan Fox. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I... Okay, let's get into it. But first of all, I have a feeling you don't like this movie. So why don't we try to be a little little positive, okay? What is the one thing you would say you enjoyed about this movie? I think the characterization of the Turtles was perfect. Okay. They they really kind of nailed that. Gave them really distinct personalities. Uh, really fit the mold of what each character should be. Like Donatello was really smart. He also acted nerdy. He sounded nerdy. He yep. had the inventions, all that stuff. Raphael, you could feel the angst coming through the TV screen yes. as you're watching it. Michelangelo was fun. He was like laid back. He told lots of stupid jokes. Only thing about Michelangelo, though, he's a little cringy in this one towards April. Yes. And yeah. then Leo, Leo really didn't have that much. And then going back, looking at Johnny Knoxville voice, Leonardo totally did not even remember that or even kind of get that vibe of Johnny Knoxville coming from that. Right. But yeah, yeah, me too. The characterization of the turtles worked well. You could really see them as 
kind of brothers and you know individuals individuals ragging on each other that kind of stuff i think that part was great okay so i i agree with you i even like splinter i like the um the actor who does splinter he he was monk in that one tv show called monk yeah tony Shalhoub. no he was absolutely yes. horrible at splinter this was the really? worst splinter out of every splinter we've seen even the really? ninja turtle 3 splinter where you don't see him from the waist down this was oh, yeah, the worst. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm talking about the voice, though. You don't like Tony Shalhoub? It was really weird because he was going back and forth between, like, a normal speaking and then kind of faux Asian. It was just really awkward. Okay. Especially since, okay, like, okay. this is a lab rat, and it's uh-huh. never been to Asia. It just read one ninjutsu book, and then all of a sudden he grows like a Fu Manchu. And that's like a don't. samurai bun. I'm like, yeah. what just happened? And then like the only into- time, the only time he sounds like good with yeah. an accent is when he's describing the pizza and he's going through all the cheeses <laughs> and he's doing it with an <laughs> Italian accent. He he was perfect for that part. Oh man, he's like Asiago, oh. and I'm just like, okay, that works. But like the rest <laughs> of it was like, what in the world is going on? Okay, like okay. why does he have a Fu Manchu? That's, that's true. not even that's not even like Japanese. Yeah, he should actually be more um he should be more New York style, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're they're pretty much New York animals. <laughs> and they're about the same age. Cause like these turtles and this rat all grew up together in this lab. Why is he like so much older and the father figure? <laughs> oh man, you bring up so many good points. Okay, okay. Before we dive into it, I- I'm gonna go into some of my uh, pros that I I kind of enjoyed. Okay, because <laughs> we're gonna dog on this a lot. But okay, number one, I agree with you. I do like the dynamics between the turtles. I really like uh, Raphael's voice. I really like Michelangelo's voice. The only Ninja Turtle that I didn't really em- uh, what is that? I didn't really like as much in this film is probably probably Leonardo because for Leonardo they really played it. They really played him as super bland. Like nothing goes on with him. He did, yeah, he, he just kind of fades away. Yeah, he barely leads, and then he doesn't even come up with the the last. You remember where they where they jump on top of each other's sh- uh, shells? Yeah, I I don't even think he came up with that at the end. Wasn't wasn't it Raf? Uh, yeah, I, I think it was Raf. Yeah, and I I feel like in the past. No, it was Michelangelo. Oh, was it Michelangelo? Because he's like, y'all want to play Buck Buck, and then everyone's like, what? And then they realize, oh yeah, let's play Buck Buck. <laughs> oh, dude, when you just said that, I thought you said butt fuck. <laughs> I was no. like, what? <laughs> Did not say that. <laughs> okay, Buck Buck, right? Okay, so Buck Buck is like the. Where they jump on each other's shells as a game that they played as kids. Okay, anyways. So, other than the whole... I Oh, I also like Shell Shock. I thought Shell Shock was a pretty good song. <laughs> what did you think of the song? The song was okay. I mean, it was very I, and, up the times. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I, I really did enjoy Brian Tyler's original score i thought it was i thought it was very much like a transformers thing overall you know because you know michael bay produced this so he has a pretty big hand on what's going on with the with the especially the visuals you know what i mean yeah okay so we've said a couple of pros not not that many why don't we get into the cons and one of my major cons is something that you brought up. I hate this new origin story of how how April kind of raised all these animals as her pets. You know what I mean? And literally saves them at the end too. Yeah. Like she she is so I was I was counting the minutes and it was like 15 minutes in before you get a glimpse of the turtles cuz I was uh-huh. like when Raf is doing like the other like you can kind of see him throwing around those um what's it, shipping containers, and right? Then it's right, not right. till like about 20, nineteen minutes in that you actually see the turtles, and right. I'm like, how is that nineteen minutes before you actually see the the title characters? 
yeah of the, exactly. mo- of the movie itself like they did that whole stupid like comic book rendition at the beginning to kind of set the scene which was completely yeah. unnecessary because they still went through <laughs> an, an origin story right like oh, it was completely my. unnecessary and i have to say man megan <laughs> megan fox is not a great actress and she does not age well particularly she is very wooden i think my only favorite character is probably will arnett <laughs> and he was super which, annoying which I'm for me is the, like like yeah. why is Vern like an important character because in the cartoon he was like nobody he was like the annoying guy that everyone hated was he actually in the cartoon i don't even remember yeah, his vernon he was like oh yeah what did he do he was just he worked at the tv station oh that's it yeah okay well i don't remember that it's been a while since i saw the cartoon but yeah he he was probably the only only person that i thought was remotely funny april is just an idiot throughout this whole show why would you go to your boss and tell him you found a vigilante and not have any any what what is that substantial evidence of it course sounded like a crazy like person that. Yeah, she yeah, sounded like a complete crazy person. It. I know. She's freaking stupid. And then is is Whoopi Goldberg's character an actual character in the in the show? I have no idea. Okay, I just clicked on like, Wikipedia. In the cartoon, in the cartoon yeah. it's like a, an old white guy that plays her boss. Oh, so this guy okay. is really different. But it, it, okay. the last name still is Thompson, Mr. Thompson. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to say another thing. And this is a recurring theme on why we hate these movies. Why are there so many human characters? All you need is Shredder and the Foot. Who the Yeah, the whole sax character made no sense. Yeah, what? <laughs> I mean, it kind of does cuz they're kind of trying to create like some kind of Trump-like character who, you know, manipulates the situation so he'll get more money. I mean, that makes sense, but you don't really need it because... He was not necessary at all. Yeah, Shredder doesn't need him. And then, oh my gosh, Shredder's costume is terrible. That was ridiculous. And then, like, like he's winning yeah. constantly. Like, he's beating up Splendor, <laughs> and then he just stops. He's beating up Raph, yeah. and then he just stops. And I'm like, yeah. there's no, it makes no sense that he would stop. Oh my like, god. at all. Like, why would you just... I'm going to stop now walk away <laughs> made you know no we didn't even do a we didn't even do a plot summary man. <laughs> plot summary april shows yeah. up april is chasing down the foot april <laughs> gets fired april sees the ninja turtles they find out that april is the key to the ninja turtles so the ninja turtles go and find april basically yeah. everything plot point is about april uh, April, April goes like to save one. the Ninja Turtles, <laughs> and by coincidence, Raphael becomes the last Ronin because he's the one that doesn't get captured. Yeah, and he has and, all the weapons. And then April rescues the turtles while Raph gets beaten up, and then uh, April devises, devises a plan to save the day because <laughs> she does not trust the Ninja Turtles to actually do it. And oh so my. April ends up saving the day because the Ninja Turtles actually failed in their mission. So, wow. That's you're... why it's called April and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> you're absolutely right. The more I think about it, yeah, that's exactly what it is. This is April's story. But the funny thing is, no one cares about April. When you go to a movie called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you want to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> like more than their girl their, you know, their girlfriend kind of Meg- Megan Fox, whatever. And then, dude, another thing I I don't like because it's clearly not earned in this particular movie, okay? So at the end, right, everyone's on that metal girder that's falling down. You remember? Like all the Ninja Turtles are holding onto that bar or whatever, and it's falling down. Everyone's kind of confessing. And then all of a sudden, Raphael starts like saying, you know, I'm sorry, I'm so rough on you guys and blah, blah, blah. I just, I love you. You know, and he's crying and then it lands and then everyone's like, dude, Raph, you know, we survived, right? 
I feel like I heard the speech from you once, like when we were in Dude. college, and you were like <laughs> upset with everyone. <laughs> Dude, that was so unearned. It's so stupid. Or is it just me? Like I don't get it. No, because like there wasn't enough interaction between them to like really warrant that. Because the movie was about yeah. April, not the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Like I okay. feel like that speech should have been in that the other CGI one that we just watched. Like oh. it was earned there. It yeah. was not earned in this movie. And then you know what's crazy? So when you watch the animated CGI one. It looks great because, you know, it's animation, but they look freaking fake the whole time. And there's no, you don't feel any kind of tangibility to them. You don't feel any weight. Like, why okay. does Leonardo look like Rufio at the end of Hook? <laughs> like, why is he dressed like Rufio at the end of Hook? I don't understand that. Uh, and then how, how did they become bulletproof? And like so strong, they can like hold up metal girders and throw around shipping containers. It makes no sense. And th- and then their strength, it kind of seems to fluctuate because when they beat up the the Foot Clan, it's not as easy sometimes. And then, you know, and then like no- Shredder's like stomping on Raph, right? And yeah. it's like, oh, you can hear a shell cracking, but he's literally like going down a mountain on the shell, and he's totally yeah. fine. And I'm like, this just there's no like equivalence here yeah <laughs> that's hilarious no man okay and then let's go back to the whole splinter found one book on ninjutsu how do you learn how do you learn to be a ninja off of one book it doesn't oh, i'm so frustrated it's so and then he holds his own against shredder after reading yeah. one book and training himself, he can defeat a ninja master like Shredder. <laughs> and then Shredder had to rely on technology to win. Dude. Okay. And how long was Splinter's tail? Because that thing <laughs> looks like it just grew. Could it retract? And, like, Could it grow and, and shrink? Yeah. Oh my god. Dude. This movie... <laughs> Like, Splinter is total cultural appropriation. That's all I got to say. Yeah. He's like, okay, going to the hashi. On. I'm like, what is a hashi? <laughs> is that in your did ninjutsu you look book? It up? Yeah, I did. There was no real, like, Japanese word that would have made sense. Oh, my God. You probably said it wrong. Because, <laughs> like, I had the subtitles on, and I spelled it how it was spelled in the subtitles. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, oh, like... My- it's like yeah. an online puzzle game is like uh-huh. one one uh, <laughs> possibility. <laughs> and I'm what what like, puzzle game? I don't know. Oh, okay. Like there's a Quora I, about it and it's like, what does Hashi mean? And let's see. It says, depends on the kanji you use. It can mean bridge or family. <laughs> okay. Or chopsticks or edge. I think I think they're trying to go for family. <laughs> this is, What's well, used this is in a... family, but it's not actually the word family. Oh, it's <laughs> probably chopsticks, man. <laughs> yeah, or edge. I don't know. Like they're all teetering on the edge, so maybe it was the edge, but it literally made no sense. Okay, Andrew, I I gotta say this real quick because I just I just saw it on Wikipedia. So the the cinematographer, his name is Lula Car. Carvalho, and he was invited to work in the film during production of the 2014 remake of RoboCop. What? Wow. The two worst remakes ever. RoboCop in this movie, man. I mean, RoboCop wasn't the worst. I mean, I mean it but definitely it wasn't, wasn't the best, but... Yeah. Okay, Did, well, what I'll say really is... Just- Oh my goodness. I, I I mean, I just remember liking the Ninja Turtles and hating everything else. And once again, rewatching it, I liked the Ninja Turtles and hated everything else. Yeah, I I think this story is more of a mess than the than the cartoon one we just watched. Although they had all these weird rock monsters and monsters they're looking for because 
I thought the turtles on the animated one were much more fleshed out than this one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I and, mean, yeah, go ahead. No, no. I, I, this movie is a, a, a travesty. Like, I don't know, man. It was the fighting even good. I, I can't even some, remember. Some it. of it was, I don't, you know, what, what interestingly also upset me was, uh, Karai. Okay. Yeah. She didn't do anything. Yeah. She was completely just useless. Yeah, in and the like, comics, I'm looking at like her description. Yeah. Character is just a member of the Foot Clan, but <laughs> she's a lot more than a member of the Foot Clan. Yeah, isn't she like the granddaughter of Shredder or the or she's the, like niece the daughter or of Shredder? She's like Shredder's yeah. daughter. Yeah, and she doesn't do anything in this movie. It's it's really sad. Yeah, and ah, uh, I don't know, man. I. <laughs> Dude, did you know this movie cost one hundred twenty-five to one hundred fifty million dollars, but for the budget? Yeah, because That's... you know why? Because it's uh, Michael Bay. It's freaking crazy, dude. The original Ninja Turtle movie, like, probably was like four million dollars, and this one's like one tw- one twenty-five. Oh, actually. Don't don't take my word for it. I don't think it was actually four million dollars, but <laughs> but yeah, this this movie. Okay, um, I I don't know what else to say because I think we're just gonna keep dogging on it pretty much, right? Like, um, I mean, I'm fine with doing that. Okay, I if you want to like, keep I dogging like, on it, let's keep. I feel like it earned it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Okay, this movie was 101 minutes. It felt longer. Definitely felt longer. The only things I liked about this movie, as I said before, is I I really, I thought the original soundtrack or the the score was pretty good. (laughs) I don't know. Okay, other than the Turtles, anything else that you enjoyed? (laughs) Um... No. I did no? like the the part where they blow up Vern's car at the end. Okay, yeah, that was funny. That was funny. I, I'm trying to remember like any one-liners that they had. Oh, oh, okay. I have something. Something that really bugged the hell out of me. So, remember when they're going down the mountains, right? Yeah. And then and then so the the Foot Clan, they have this Hummer, and then on top of it, they have, like, this gun that shoots out a cable with a taser, right? Yeah. I hate how Leo <laughs> got shot with this thing, like, three times. And then he had to get saved by Raph, or was it Donatello, or whatever, right? And, and then, okay, you're bulletproof on your shell... But you're not shockproof. I, <laughs> I didn't yeah, get it. No sense. Yeah, and absolutely no sense at all. Like this movie was bonkers. And then okay, and then there's that part right where they have all three Ninja Turtles strapped up, and then they're having their blood drained from their body, right? And then Donatello is smart enough. He's like, "Oh, give us adrenaline, right? We'll be okay." I didn't know it was so easy to just press a button and then all of a sudden does it does it stop draining their blood and just add adrenaline like <laughs> what's going no, it on just, it just adds but the thing is like she was going over the limit like there was a yeah. warning sign on there and she did that for each of them so I'm like are you yeah. trying to save them or kill them yeah because it's like well, blinking at her like this is like a lethal dose and she's like I'm still pressing that button and I'm just like <laughs> Uh, are you really trying to save them? Yeah, I don't know, man. And then, okay, so they pull it out, right? They they break out of it. Why didn't they break out of it at the beginning? <laughs> if you could break out of it with extra adrenaline, I'm sure you could break out of it with your normal strength. I. And then how do you break through the glass? Well, in all honesty, like, they're strong enough to, like, hold that that tower up and everything they should have well been able to uh break out of that because it really wasn't that hard yeah 
Oh, you know what I did like though? I like how Michelangelo had that really cool skateboard. <laughs> My thing is, where did that come from? Because it made no sense for him to start off with that. Oh, that's true. Like Donatello should have made it for him, like throughout the yeah. course of it's the just film. Randomly, he has like this really crazy skateboard and it's like oh i've always had this crazy and my other thing is like donatello's staff like how is it that strong it's like been able to like flip over that truck well like what's okay i'm not gonna (laughs) i'm not gonna defend it but maybe momentum i i have no idea (laughs) but if it's a wooden bow staff it's kind of splinter when it's it gets hit by a moving truck but there's no way that was a wooden bow staff because it can extend, you know? Yeah, just the tip of it, not the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's like it true. Just popped out, you know? Yeah. I mean, the only weapons that make sense are everyone else's because they didn't try to, you know, modernize it. Like, yeah, did, but I mean... Did Michael... I don't remember. Did Michelangelo use his nunchucks that much? I don't even think he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, he did? Like, a lot, yeah. though? Yeah, I mean, as much as he was fighting, he wasn't fighting much. Because even, here, like, here's the thing. Shredder took his nunchucks at one point and was using them. Right. But here's the thing. So, I remember every single time he used it in the original three and the animated, but I don't remember at all when he used it here. So oh, did I he do. do any cool moves? Yeah, I mean, he was pretty proficient at them. Okay, okay. All right. Well, that's probably because I just phased out. I was just, like, spacing out on this movie. Yeah, no. I mean, I had to watch it in two sessions. Oh, my God. Like, I watched probably the first half, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go to bed now. I'm 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 really glad that the, the sequel is actually free on Hulu. And we should watch it as soon as possible before it's taken off. Because the only way I could see this was renting it for three ninety nine, And it's yeah, not even here. worth... Yeah, it's not worth three ninety nine on iTunes. But I do remember the second one is, is much better because they fixed the problem of the first movie, is, which they focus on the turtles instead of April. Do they really? Yeah, I remember... I mean, I just remember there's a lot more of them in the second one. I remember liking the second one a lot more. And then a little disappointed that they didn't do a third. Oh no, I'm I'm not disappointed at all cuz I'm tired of looking at these turtles. Like some cuz my wife, she looked at me and she was like, "Why are these turtles so ugly?" <laughs> I can see her saying that. Yeah, and then all their masks are are really they're they're all very different. They're not just a sash. Yeah. So, I think Donatello has all those gadgets, which I think is cool because that kind of goes with his character. But I think Raph kind of has a do-rag, right? Raph, yeah, Raph also, where did he get uh, sunglasses that fit his head? Because oh. <laughs> they're giant. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Dude, okay, number one, these turtles are like eight feet tall, man. How, ah, and you have a you have a freaking shell that probably weighs a hundred... I don't know, 200 pounds? There's no way they're being that quiet. You know what I mean? Yeah. The perfect size of a Ninja Turtle is, I would say, that animated series that was probably in like 2012 or 2013 on Nickelodeon, and it went on for like seven, eight seasons or something. It's yeah. either that or the or the animated movie we just saw, you know? The original one, they seem to... I, I enjoyed it because they're very tangible. They're very practical. But yeah, like, I don't see how any turtle could be a ninja at that size. <laughs> yeah, no, you're just... You're basically a transformer. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what he was going for, you know? Michael Bay hired this this guy, Jonathan Liebsman. And I, I don't know. Have you ever seen Battle Los Angeles? Yeah, I remember it was forgettable. Like I'm, I look at his filmography, and the only thing I liked was Darkness Falls. I don't. I have never even seen Darkness Falls. What's that you about? You haven't. It's like no. the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> what? Well, not really. It's like 
there's like this witch i think it's a witch that like uh-huh. can travel only in the darkness and is like afraid of the light and um it stars like i think the guy from seventh heaven <laughs> oh my god um, okay i think it was him no it wasn't him who was the the main character the main guy yeah it's it's some it doesn't guy. matter anyways it, it doesn't so matter. like <laughs> he's like traumatized as a child okay and um it's like the legend of the tooth fairy right and so uh-huh. the tooth fairy ghost which comes in the darkness to come and get people and then uh he has to, like return home at the end and you know confront the witch i i have to say you're probably the only one that enjoyed it because on on rotten tomatoes it's like a nine percent <laughs> yeah no i mean it was a fun horror movie he also yeah. did texas chainsaw massacre at the beginning that was okay if i recall mm. correctly but like not the best yeah i i haven't seen it but i will you know I mean? say i, 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 I like thought... horror movies like rings though was yeah. horrible uh wrath of the titans was horrible yeah that was pretty bad i have no idea what the shannara chronicles are that should be a tv show i think like i think johnny depp was tied to it or something oh no i take that back john favreau was the executive producer and then yeah, Doolittle, guy, like that bombed so hard. I heard that sucked, like terrible. And it had Robert Downey Jr. and it bombed so hard. So how yeah. can it bomb so hard with him? Well, he was an uncredited uh, director of reshoots, so so the hired director was probably kicked off. Yeah. Wow, man, this is this is terrible, dude. It's a, it, it's a legit bad movie and it hasn't aged well with time at all the only the only real good thing about it i thought was the voice of Raphael alan richson and he's actually in titans have you seen titans yet yeah so oh, yeah, he plays he's, um he's hawk yeah he's hawk that's right yeah. And oh, I think so. Yeah. He has stories to tell about these movies, actually. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because, like, I remember watching some clip on YouTube of him going off on these movies oh. because he said him and the other turtles were treated yeah. like garbage, like complete garbage. Really? Like, really? one time they got left on set because they were the last ones to be carted off, you know, like in the vans to go back. Uh-huh. And he had to like get a cab to go home. Wow! Because Seriously? like, yeah, because like, all the crew is like union and they have like rules, so they carted off the crew first before mm-hmm. the actors. And he also right. said like he got paid like nothing for these movies, and he didn't even want to come back for the sequel, but he was contractually obligated obligated to do so, so he did because you know he's a <laughs> professional. Yeah, and like I felt bad for him because like, like if you find the the clip on YouTube and watch his stories, like he yeah. is just you can tell why Raphael has so much angst in these movies. <laughs> he was not a happy camper. Because I have to say, like that final speech he makes, although it's unearned, he does it pretty well. Like oh, he does. <laughs> yeah, no, he he, he does delivers. a great job. Yeah. yeah, the voice actors like did a great job. Whoever did the motion yeah. capture in the suits did a great job too yeah man it's it's just really it's really sad that you know they have the right people except for megan fox i don't i don't think she can act at all but they have the right (laughs) turtles and and they have enough where they could create a plausible story and then they fill in the blanks with all this bullshit you know it's just why do you need Eric Sachs? Everything could have been fine with just Shredder. Why and change Baxter Stockman? You just huh? add Baxter Stockman as your scientist, and you're good to go. Yeah, like, you and... don't need to add and create characters that have no business being in the Turtles universe. Exactly, and. It's not like he's in any of the comics either. They just created some guy out of the blue because I remember there was like scuttlebutt that Eric Sachs is actually a Roku Saki. But 
it wasn't even that. It was Yeah. <laughs> and then how does Splinter know about Shredder? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it he's never no been sense. to Japan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And then oh it just pisses like okay, I remember when I first saw it, when I first saw the movie. I was like, oh, I really like how they changed the origin. But now that I think about it, and after watching all the consecutive films, I'm like, oh, man, this thing makes no sense at all. Because you do need that Japanese link. And, okay, I'll say it right now. It is weird that Splinter, in the first film, learns karate by (laughs) watching his master. But it kind of gives him an age, and it kind of gives him a what is that a motivation you know what i mean whereas it makes more sense (laughs) yes exactly even though it's not a lot of sense it makes (laughs) more sense exactly but yeah um so actually alan richson i just saw this today on twitter He's actually going to be Jack Reacher in the new jack Reacher series on amazon i saw the trailer for that and he looks so huge I know, like, but like, he's supposed to be like that's yeah, the like, way the he character looks is. like. But like, if you've seen like the um, the Tom Cruise version of it, it's like <laughs> night and day. Like he looks yeah. like he ate Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, but he looks like he. I, at first, I was like, "Is this a WWE superstar doing this?" Yeah, and then it's like, "Oh no, it's not." Because <laughs> I thought it was like a professional wrestler being in this role, and I was like, "Oh no, it's not a professional wrestler." Wait, so real quick. So it says voice actors and motion capture. Yeah. So is Noel Fisher, who is Michelangelo, is Alan Richson, is Jeremy Howard, are they actually in the mocap suits? Yeah, they were. I remember seeing really? like, pictures of them in them. Like they had like these foam shells on and everything. So how did they do all the action? That's my question. <laughs> oh, you know, they had stunt doubles for that stuff. Oh, okay, okay. So you mean they're there just standing around pretty much. And like talking and actually doing the lines and stuff and acting. Right, okay, I gotcha. You know, another thing that I really enjoyed is kind of watching Shredder, not in his costume, but just being like a badass Japanese dude. (laughs) See, but the thing is, they recast everybody in the second movie. I know! They went like younger. It makes no sense. Because they knew they screwed up in the first one, in all honesty. But, like, Be- I, I really liked that that Shredder actor. Yeah, but his English wasn't the cleanest. Uh-huh. And so, like, trying to get him to have that dialogue throughout probably would have been hard. Well, the funny thing is, he was actually born in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know if they were just doing, like, a thick accent on him for the character or what, but... Yeah, interesting. dude, I don't know. I feel sorry for him. But actually, that guy, he I'm on his IMDb page and he was on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2017 cartoon. Oh, was he? <laughs> yeah, he played like a samurai character. <laughs> like, well, good for him. Yeah. So, hey, he comes back for some more Ninja Turtles. So, um, yeah, man, I have absolutely nothing else i i think i'm out (laughs) yeah you i mean that's about all the hate i can give for this movie um i don't know did we hit do we hit every like plot point yeah we did the only thing like i want to say is like michael ando was like super cringy in this movie okay give me okay why how like he's all over april like all over (laughs) april like touching her constantly saying super creepy things to her it yeah. is like legit cringy and then he does that head. oh we're gonna find you we'll find you all right like he he's just trying to be like all sexual and stuff i think it's like he the, sounds like a frat boy yeah and, he's, it, and not in a good way but i don't know i think i always felt like that was kind of how michelangelo michelangelo would be no, like he would be like a surfer dude, more you know. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, all right. Well, 
for all those of you that sat through it with us, thank you. Um, we have one more movie left, guys. But do and we, I'm not excited think? about it. But according to Andrew, it's better. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying it's great, but it, it definitely, I remember it being better. Obviously, I haven't seen it in a long time, so yeah. I think that was a grain of salt. <laughs> and then I th- I think it hurts even more, especially since we've watched them all back to back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we've kind of seen all the renditions of the Turtles and then now April and now we're seeing Casey Jones, right? With the next one. Yeah, I didn't like Stephen Amell as Casey Jones, just saying it right off the bat right now. But we'll see yeah. in my rewatch if, if my opinion has changed. Yeah, so we'll see. And then uh, hopefully we'll we'll you guys will be hearing from us next in in the coming months. Yeah. So we're gonna hey, take Steven, a... before we go though, why don't you go ahead and rank them up to this point? Oh geez. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll do the original first. I think number two and the animated are tied or two and three, um, respectively. So if I can't tie them, I'll do them respectively, two and the animated. And then I'll do three and then this one is the worst. Okay, really? your turn. Yeah. All right, mine would be the original and then Secret of the uh-huh. Ooze, then the uh-huh. TMNT, uh-huh. this one... And then number three. What? Because number three was just that bad. I, like, that's I the just, thing, though. Number, th- yeah. Number three was just. I mean, it had the same <laughs> plot holes, or not plot holes. It had the same pitfalls. It was more about the humans than the turtles. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. number three was just. It had so much to like live up to, and it just yeah. fell so far. Like this well, was brand new. It was a reboot. Mm-hmm. It's Michael Bay. Like at least we got some cool action out of it. There was not really any good action or fighting in that third one. It was all phoned in. You know what? I will agree with you on that. I think my thing is there's just a bigger nostalgia factor with the third one. And also because there's a little Korean boy in there and it reminds you of your best friend. <laughs> No, uh, well, uh, okay. Um, I was, <laughs> I was gonna say the one-liners worked on me a little more, but uh, whatever you want to say. <laughs> but yeah, I, I will agree. Three, 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 and this one are just terrible. Like they are bad. I would yeah. if I if I could tie them, I would. But yeah, I just I, I just <laughs> number three is the worst. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's re-rank them next next time when we've finally seen the last one. Yeah, final rankings in the next one. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, it's good talking to you. Uh talk to you soon, man. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye.